Thank you for joining us on another Cash Trash episode. I'd like to warn everybody that some of these videos may be a little upsetting to some of you because we may be talking a little bit of trash about some of these brands, especially if you work for the company, if you own any of these brands, or if you're just a fan of them, we may talk a little bit of trash and knock them down a peg or two. But there may be some good stuff as well, so check it out. Hey everyone, it's Alan over at Cobblers Plus and today's not really a cash or trash rating video. It's more, as you can see as the title goes, um, we, need a, we need to stop this. This is ridiculous. This is getting out of hand. This is just stupid. There are too many people out there trying to compare shoes to other shoes that are not supposed to be even in the same category at all together and should not be even comparable in any form or way, whether it's the price point or the you know the style or how they're constructed but there are people that are trying to do so and they're falsely educating newcomers to the groups and communities now i just saw a post the other day in alan edmonds and i see them all the time and it's not just an alan edmonds enthusiast that's the group on facebook if you're not familiar but i see them in lucasi enthusiasts which i'm an admin in um tacova's enthusiast thursday boot company enthusiast which we have here as well all types of categories, heritage footwear, there are guys that are trying to compare a, and these guys are trying to compare a $200 boot, like a Thursday boot, which is a phenomenal Goodyear welted shoe at an entry level price. That's the key thing that you guys got to remember. Phenomenal at $200, Goodyear welted with a nice cork filling to a $1,200 shell cordovan Carmina. That's also Goodyear welted cork filled as well. Do you think these guys are comparable as far as quality build? You know, for $200, should you be expecting this boot here for 200 bucks? Really? That's what a lot of people are trying to do. And it's driving all of us insane, especially everyone who's a pro in the industry, whether you're a cobbler, a leather care expert, you know, a uh, sh just a shoe builder, you build them from scratch. You work for some of these companies too. You guys legally can't even complain about people just just blurting out the stupidest things about the shoes that you're creating. And I feel sorry for you guys, especially. And legally, you guys have to keep your mouth shut. But this is getting out of hand. And to the newcomers to all these groups, newcomers to our channel, if you're new and you're switching over from sneaker shoes or whatever it might be to a Goodyear welted shoe, there are tiers and categories. There's $200. There's average price point of about $400, $450. You can find them on sale too. These are Allen Edmonds. Phenomenal shoes. You can start getting into the Trekkers category. That's closer to that six, $700 range on some of them. Maybe $500 on a few models too. You can get into a $1,000 John Lobb. You could start getting into their bespoke category as well, which is way higher. You've got Shell Cordova and Carminas. Again, $1,200. But you also have your luxury category. These aren't even Goodyear welted. These are Louis Vuitton LV ankle high boots. These aren't constructed the same way as any of these guys, not even remotely close to them. At least these are somewhat close, but they're all in different price categories and people are trying to compare them as if they're equivalent, as if they're equals but they don't want to pay that high price. And you guys are the biggest problem of all who are trying to compare it to such a thing. You guys are about to run some of these companies out of business that you claim you're a huge enthusiast of. If you're an Allen Edmonds enthusiast, especially like I've seen a number of you guys, you need to shut up. Because if you have never even held a $1,200 pair of shoes or worn a pair or owned a pair, you don't have much room to criticize a pair of shoes that you found on sale for 200 bucks because they had some kind of anniversary sale. You don't get a right to com complain about it because the guys that actually own $1,200 shoes and boots or 2,000, 3,000, 4,000, even more than that dollar shoes, they are still loving their $400 Allen Edmonds or $200 sale price to Allen Edmonds every little bit and wear them every single day and do not complain about a little tiny scuff that their brand new Allen Edmonds came in with because one shoe was 
in the box with its mate and got bumped into the other one. Look at that. I created a mini scuff. Look at that. Am I going to freak out about it? No. That's actually my shoe if you're wondering, so don't be going all crazy about it. That and that is my shoe there. These are the ones, uh, those are mine and the other ones, but they're mine on a few of them here, but I just want to show you guys. Some of these little scuffs that you see on the shoe can be taken care of with polish. Even spit will work on some of it. But the problem you guys are creating is false education for the newcomers to the group, false advertising because they're expecting something that's phenomenal at only $200 on sale, you get a $1,200 shoe or boot. No, you don't. It's different. It's not comparable. It's not the same, okay? You guys need to stop that. You're falsely advertising this to people completely. The other thing is, you're not an expert. You're not. The experts will step in when it's time, but they are starting to get embarrassed and pissed off at all of you guys who are claiming to be so-called experts because you have only seen photos of a $1,200 shoe and you're trying to compare a $200 shoe or sorry, boot to another two uh, boot that's only 200 bucks. Okay, so stop it. The pros will step in. We've seen thousands of other shoes. We've compared them thousands of times. We've seen them, taken them apart, broken them apart, destroy them in some cases. In some cases, if we're lucky, we rebuild them to a new masterpiece. More commonly, that happens than not. But you guys that are claiming to be pros, stop it. You're falsely advertising all of this to the newcomers. The other problem is a lot of you who have been part of Allen Edmonds for some time, especially the AE group on Facebook, you guys know that Allen Edmonds was bought out by a firm, by an investment firm who does not care about you as a customer. You're a number in a book or on a, on a docu-form thing that they receive daily, weekly, or monthly. That's all you are. And the fact that you guys are complaining about a little scuff, stitching overlap, or stitching misalignment, which has no structural problems whatsoever, yes, the little overlap stitching is actually very normal. It has to overlap in some cases. It's actually structurally good, okay? But when you guys are complaining because it doesn't look pretty, and send it back to Alan Edmonds, Alan Edmonds takes this pair of shoes. They don't have time to look it over and see what the hell you're talking about. They leave it in the box and stack these boxes in the corner of the warehouse somewhere because they don't have somebody that can get to all of them and check and see if maybe they're still resellable as a factory second or defected item at a heavily discounted price. Now they're sitting there in a pile when these guys, the investment firm guys come in and start questioning and harassing all the hardworking shoemakers and the guys that actually run Allen Edmonds, they're asking them, what is that giant pile of thousands of shoes? And they look around and they're like, well, th those those are factory defects, sir. Well, Mr. Sir turns around and says, burn it, shut it down. We're going a different direction. Molded soles all the way. Do you want to see that? It's ugly. Because you know who did this years ago? These guys. This is my shoe that I wear every day because I like to destroy them. But these are J&M's, Johnson & Murphy. Phenomenal shoe. Used to rival Allen Edmonds, actually. You know, head-to-head -head rival. But I wear these here at the shop because I got them for free with a few other pairs, and I'm destroying them. And once they're done, they go in the trash. You complainers are going to run Allen Edmonds into the ground because we already see them taking those steps, just like Johnson & Murphy did, introducing a rubber sneaker sole. Johnson & Murphy didn't introduce a sneaker sole. They introduced a rubber form type of sole that's only adhered at the time. Then they start getting into the molded stuff. You guys are about to run Allen Edmonds into the ground because of all your complaints for the stupidest minute things. And it's the same thing for poor old uh, you know, Thursday Boot Company, as well as other brands and companies. Some of the brands and companies you guys are complaining about, literally a scuff. And when you send them back for a return or a refund, you guys are stacking up a huge pile of shoes or boots there that nobody can get to to figure out what it is you're complaining about. Now, truly, if there is truly a factory defect, I understand a major gash somewhere, you know, just just full blown knife or something like that went across it. Obviously, that's a factory defect um, hooks too much hooks on one side, not enough on the other side. That's a factory defect. The whole heel block popped off factory defect. But you guys, some of you are complaining that 
the stitches are overlapped, the heel block looks a little wonky. Now, obviously some cases that may be a problem, but if it's just a little wonky looking, sometimes it only looks that way. And when you measure it up properly, it's not actually wonky. Or if the edging isn't touching a certain spot just a little bit and stuff, you guys are causing a problem that's becoming a domino effect. And I guarantee you within the next year or two, Allen Edmonds is about to do away with Goodyear welted construction shoes because in order to have a professional that can build this it takes decades of training to build this pair of shoes from scratch, whether you have machinery to help you stitch the soles and glue and press it, or if you're doing it by hand, but it takes decades. Unfortunately, there are no professionals out there that are capable of doing so at Allen Edmonds who don't already own their own businesses and run their own shops, whether it's for repairs or custom bespoke made shoes. So Allen Edmonds has to break down each task for an individual person. One person ends up filling, uh, stitching on the welt. That is a hard job. That machine is not easy to run to stitch a welt. The next person fills it in with cork. You have to have practice to get it done right, as some of you have maybe already known in the Allen Edmonds group. Then stitching on, gluing on the sole, then trimming the sole. That's a different machine that takes some practice and a lot of education. Then finally stitching the sole to the welt. I have one of those machines here. And somebody complained a while ago saying, if a machine is stitching it, that's not truly a handmade shoe. I challenge you to come to my shop stitch a pair of soles to a pair of boots or shoes with that machine. I guarantee it, that thing is going to take off and it's going to try to chew your hand up. And it will. It will chew your hand up with no problems whatsoever because this thing is designed to stitch material that thick, okay? And you're going to be complaining that the stitching is just a little bit off. Now, if it's a whole lot off, now obviously, obviously that's something that may be a factory defect where structural integrity has been compromised at that point. But when it's just appearance wise with the overlap of the stitching or there's a small edge, you know, that's not finished out or something, you need to, you guys need to stop. I don't want to see Allen Edmonds or any other company go out of business because of too many complaints like Johnson Murphy did years ago. I'm second generation cobbler in this right around the time when I was born. That's when Johnson Murphy was kind of taking the turn for the worse. Just just a little bit after that, I was probably maybe like, I don't know, three, four or five, somewhere around there. And Johnson Murphy took a turn for the worst. Now they do have their Goodyear welted lines available now, but the guys that are so used to the Johnson Murphy price point are complaining, spending that kind of money. And they're cheaper than, than Allen Edmonds actually, and stuff like that, because for the company, it's no longer worth making Goodyear welted shoes. And you guys are about to do the same thing. And I'm sorry to say, but if you're those guys, I don't want to deal with you. I'm sorry. If you're going to complain and nitpick at the smallest minute difference when you got a phenomenal shoe at retail price about four, four fifty, and you're complaining about literally the smallest thing and debating on returning it, I don't want to work with you because you're going to expect perfection on a level of $1,200 versus a $400 shoe and you may have most likely bought them on sale at $200. We can't do we can't do business together. And a lot of other cobblers agree with me, a lot of leather care experts agree with me too. I'm not the only one. I have seen it in the groups. I've talked to other cobblers and leather care guys and guys that do custom patina work. All these guys already have you figured out. If you're complaining about the most smallest scuff and debating on it, then we know that we're going to have a problem with you already. And so does the factory. Okay, so stop. If you are not a professional, stop falsely advertising to the newcomers to the group. Obviously, if you're a newcomer, I do apologize. On behalf of those guys, look around for us, cobblers and other le leather care guys, all the guys that are pros. We usually post a lot of pictures that are before and after, maybe have a link to a video on our YouTube channel like this one here. Check us out, definitely. Subscribe to all our channels. You'll be educated phenomenally properly by all the pros, but not by these so-called enthusiasts here. Ignore those guys. The guys that are truly in the group for the love of the shoes who understand the quality, they're the same guy that will own a pair of $1,200 shoes, a pair of bespoke $2,000 pair, $3,000 pair of shoes, as well as a pair of $400 or on sale $200 pair. 
or $200 pair of Thursday boots and they love all of them in their own way. They are like each their own purpose, their own use and their own proper applications. Ignore the fake guys. The true enthusiasts are going to sit behind and just kind of be like, man, I wish I could say something, but I'm, I'm worried I'm going to upset somebody. Here I am. Told you I talk a little bit of trash sometimes. And you guys complaining suck. Sorry, but I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And uh, I know I pissed off a few guys here and there, but it's normal. That's the way our industry works as well. I know a lot of cobblers that piss off some people too. Yeah, you don't want to work with some of those guys unless you're properly trimmed and ready to go type of guy. You know. But anyways, thank you for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Like I said, I'll do a whole video at one point or another talking about... Um, well, I didn't say it actually, sorry. But I'm going to do a whole other video talking about when is the proper time to take a pair of boots or shoes and return it for a factory defected issue. I'll cover that talking about, you know, things with the liner, the welts, the stitching, the glue jobs, whatever it might be. I'll make sure to cover that in that video. Unfortunately, I just, I had to get this off my chest on behalf of all the cobblers, the leather care guys, the guys that do custom patina and dye work. And especially, especially for the shoe and boot makers that have to keep their mouths shut legally and can't even defend their own jobs because you guys are complaining about something that they actually didn't even do and it may have happened during transportation in the box. I see it all the time. It's almost every day. It's driving me crazy. I'm sorry, but I've got too much to deal with already here than to have to lose my mind over you guys. So I had to do this video. So hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Make sure you share it with the guys, whoever you see that's complaining and trying to educate the newcomers. Don't let them destroy the trust in newcomers and assume that they're supposed to get for $200 a $1,200 boot. Don't let that happen. You guys are destroying the industry by telling newcomers that. Newcomers, welcome to the group. Pay attention to the guys that are true enthusiasts. Pay attention to the guys that love and appreciate their $200 boots and their $1,200 boots as equals in their own way. Not equals as far as quality go, in their own way. Got it? That's a huge difference. So we'll see you guys next time.